Hey everybody. Alright, uh, if you've been following these videos along, I've kind of been explaining that during this whole build process, I'm going to try to explain to you um, the cost every step of the way to see what a uh, realistic build um, for something like this would look like. So uh, every once in a while, you're going to see this tally board and every time we go through a different phase, like the frame was uh, phase one, then we got into um, fixing the underbody, putting the frame back in, then we're going to go to suspension, then we're going to go to brakes, then we're going to move on to engine, transmission, uh, just the, the whole gambit. So as we go, each phase, I'll tally up the parts that I bought and uh, used on the vehicle, and then um, it goes on to the big board, uh, and we'll do, at the end of every phase, or the beginning of another, we'll do a quick tally, and I'll let you know money-wise exactly where I'm at. So, let's look real quick. Uh, for, the, um, for the underbody, and for putting the frame back in, you've got uh, the poly bushings, there's the bolt kit. Well, the poly bushings I got from Summit. Um, the bolt kit came from Kerbin, uh, which pretty good place. Uh, back before G-bodies were even close to popular, uh, Kerbin was the only place that you could really get parts from, and that was because of the Grand National. So thank you, Grand National, for giving the G-body uh, the boost it needed, because I think if it weren't for the Grand National, and in a little part the Monte Carlo, uh, the performance market in this would have taken a little bit longer to get going. Um, so again, that's a good thing. So uh, back to the list, also from Summit, Formula 5. If you remember, that's the, um, that's the bushing lube, uh, elephant snot, don't touch that stuff. It's nasty, you'll never get it off. Uh, cross member, which came from G-Body Parts, another good place. Thank you very much for you guys over there. A uh, lot of good parts coming out of that place, a lot of sheet metal. Sheet metal alone, uh, I think, was a deterrent for some people not to get messing with these cars because you couldn't get quarter panels, you couldn't get inner fender wells. Um, couldn't get doors, all that stuff is available now. They've got the, uh, every single piece is like three different components that make up the torque box in the back that you saw me put in on the one side that I got used from Toby P, G-Body uh, Forum, thank you. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of sheet metal out there now. So if you were ever thinking about doing one of these cars, now is the time to get one before this market blows up. It's already showing uh, a, a rise and use vehicles for these cars. Um, so, uh, if you're thinking about this, get one now before it uh, becomes a costly endeavor for you. <clears throat> I keep getting sidetracked here. So we get back to it. Uh, cross member was G Body Parts. Uh, Torque Box, Toby P. Thank you very much. The chassis saver that was from Magnet Paints, and. Um, I got three cans of the 2K chassis black that was from Eastwood. So you add all these parts up, $723. That's what it cost in uh, all the, the parts that I needed to put it back together. And then we go over to the, the big total over here. So the car was $58.45, uh, doing the, uh, the frame restoration, $480. And then now we add the underbody to it, $723. Grand total $7,048 so far. All right, so $7,048 that includes the price of buying the vehicle. Uh, good luck finding a 442, uh, even in the shape that mine was in, where you had uh, I got rust in the quarters and I got some other issues uh, as far as, as um, sheet metal. Uh, good luck finding one for that price now. Uh, you're going to pay for a really decent 442 now, about 10 grand um, and up. So, like I said, if you're interested in doing this, now is the time. Pull the trigger. Uh, there's no tomorrow. There's only today, right? So let's get that going. Okay, uh, let's move on to uh, other items. Uh, I've been on YouTube for a while. Uh, but I haven't really taken it all too serious. It's just been kind of like a hobby thing for me. It's a place to show the restoration of my vehicle, um, give an opportunity to share with the community uh, some of the stuff I'm doing. 
I'm on a couple different forums, uh, on YouTube, obviously, uh, and um, I have a Facebook page that's specifically for this. And, and it, I've never, it's not a full-time job for me. Uh, and if you've been following this, the infrequency of the posts and the amount of time that it's taken me to do it, um, obviously that's not the case. Uh, I have a full-time job, uh, putting kids through college, uh, I got a very loving wife who, uh, who uh, lets me get away with all this stuff um, within reason. So all that together, uh, I was just basically, I, was, I never got past the newbie phase of being a YouTube guy. Um, I mean, look at me. I, I, do, do I look like a social media guy? No. Um, I, 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 I'm on Facebook about once a month if I need to. I, I just, uh, it's not me, but um, I'm learning. And I have watched a series of videos by a couple of different YouTubers out there, and it really opened my eyes. Um, I have just over a thousand subscribers, which in YouTube world, that's, I'm a paper cup floating in the Atlantic Ocean somewhere. I, I'm not even on the radar. I think I've got total out of the the 20, 30 some videos I have of uh, 450,000 views total, all right? Some people are clocking a million views per video, uh, depending on what they're doing, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> I, I watched a couple videos and man, it opened my eyes. I have a thousand something subscribers. I post a new video and after three weeks, 650 people have watched it. And I'm like, man, what am I doing wrong? Um, why aren't at least a thousand people that subscribed to me and said, hey, this is cool, I wanna see more of this, go get at it, uh, I'll watch the video when it shows up, that, why aren't they watching it? Well, come to find out, just because you subscribe to my channel, doesn't mean you're ever going to find out if I post a new video. This, it, it's, I, I had no idea. So, down below where, where, uh, where the subscription is at, uh, when you subscribe, there's like a little gray bell that's next to it. You have to click on the bell and then acknowledge that you want to get uh, updates uh, from me to you telling you that I put a new video out. What? I thought when you subscribed you did that. Uh, um, so, yeah, so apparently that's it. So, if you haven't done that, if you're watching this and you're a subscriber, and uh, you haven't done that, and you're not getting emails every time I uh, post a new video, which I'm not going to fill your inbox with, with the crap load of emails because I'm not posting on a, on a, like, I'm not one of these guys that's posting twice a week, all right? I'm not going to fill your inbox up, so uh, don't be afraid to do that, and I would really appreciate it if you did. Um, yeah, so that was news to me. I, I, I was completely... Uh, surprised by the fact that my subscribers don't even know that uh, I'm posting new videos. Um, and then, from what I understand is, when you go in and you post, yeah, go ahead and give me emails, there is um, there's an app for your phone where you can get a notification on your phone. But just because you click you want to get a notification on the phone doesn't mean you actually get it. You have to go to your phone, go to the application section, you have to download that YouTube app that gives you the notification, and even then, when you download the app, it automatically sets to don't notify me. So you have to go in within the settings on that and click yes, I want to get notified. What? <laughs> why, do, why do they have a subscription if you have to do four more things to actually find out if the guy you subscribe to posts a new video? I don't know. So, uh, watching a lot of videos, I got a lot of insight on how to grow your YouTube channel, which... Uh, you know, this isn't really income for me per se, but I'm getting more interested in it and I'm starting to look at it more from um, a, a gaming pers uh, perspective where I'm actually trying to get something done um, and trying to grow this. Um, we'll see. I don't know. I, I, it's not like anything hinges on it. I'm just going to give it a shot and, uh, and see if I can't break into the market a little bit more than what I'm at. So look forward to that in some manner, I don't know. Uh, some guys are doing email lists where, um, where 
they're compiling uh, people's emails and then they just send out their own email. Hey, uh, go to YouTube. We just posted a new video. You might like it. Uh, so I'm going to play around with a couple different things. I'm also, unfortunately, going to have to go on Facebook a little bit more than I do. So I'm in the process right now of um, basically catching my Facebook page up with my YouTube page. I got a bunch of videos on YouTube. Um, and then you go over to Gbody Forum and I post a bunch of pics on there of the build. Um, so I'm going to try to use Facebook and combine that into one place where everything is at. Videos and pics uh, as I go through stuff like this. Um, and then I'm going to try... It takes a while to load a video on, the, um, on Facebook, just like it does on YouTube, I guess. So um, I'm in the process of doing that. I'm going to try to post, post, post pics, slap a video on, pics, 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 video, do some interaction. Um, so if you go to my, you, uh, go to my, you, go to my Facebook channel, um, go to my Facebook page, uh, post a comment. Let me know. Give me some feedback. What do you want to see? What am I not doing that you want to see? Because honestly, uh, what's the point of me doing this if no one out there is entertained or even cares? So I want to try. I'm going to build the car whether you're here or not. That's, that's the simple truth. I'm just doing this because right now it's fun and I'm getting some feedback from guys on the forum and on uh, YouTube and they're kind of digging what I'm doing. I did a, a five-part series on rebuilding a Saginaw 800 steering box and that thing, for, for me, for my channel anyway, that blew up. People love that. So I think I'm going to get into doing a couple things. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rebuild the, uh, the power steering uh, pump um, so we'll do a video on that and anytime uh, I've, I've got uh, if you've ever had a G body or any uh, GM vehicle like in the 80s 90s and it has the tilt steering wheel there are there's a set of bolts deep down in the middle of the steering wheel that hold the top part of the column where the tilt is at to the bottom part of the column <clears throat> excuse me and those things always go loose for some reason so you always get that shaky wheel so I'm going to go in and tear down the steering column to get to those bolts, you take them out one at a time, lock tight, put them back in, cinch them down, put the thing back together. So I think probably people will be interested in that because it's something that a lot of you guys out there have probably experienced at some point or another. So little things like that, I'll do um, some rebuild stuff and um, if I really get adventuresome, maybe I'll even go into some live video. I don't know. Uh, who knows where I'm going to take this? And honestly, right now, all this is is talk, right? It's going to take action by me to get this stuff done. So um, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know how things are going with the build and what do you think I should be doing. Uh, I'll give you some uh, feedback that I've gotten so far right now. One guy told me, hey, um, you stripped the underside of the body down and then you had it coated and you really didn't show how you stripped the body down or what you did. And, uh, and my response initially to the guy was, well, um, you know, who, who wants to see some guy with a sander sanding the bottom of a vehicle? It's kind of boring. It makes for dull TV. Uh, you know, even if I show a little bit of that, my thought was um, everybody knows how to strip rust and undercoating off the bottom of a car. It's kind of boring. It's just that it's that drudge work in the trench crap you got to do to get to the wow. So um, I, didn't, I didn't show any of that. I didn't even show how I did it. And the guy made a point. He said, you know, some DIYers out there, um, they're, they're not as experienced as what you think they are. And they would like to see that kind of stuff uh, as far as what materials did you use? What tool did you use? Um, what chemicals did you use? So I'm going to make an effort in the future to show a little bit of what I do and how I do it. Um, so then you can comment and tell me I'm wrong <laughs> or, or whatever, but I'm, I'm actually going to start doing that now and uh, giving you um, a little bit more insight into, hey, I use this part and I use this to strip that and I use that to sand this. So uh, hopefully it's a, a little bit more um, in depth. And um, I mean, I'm not gonna show 20 minutes of me sanding metal uh, 
but I will show you, hey, this is the, this is the, the Makita that I bought. I really like this because it's got an adjustable speed at the bottom, and here's the uh, here's the size I got, settings I use. Here's the sanding discs I use to clean it. This seemed to work best for me. What do you think? That kind of thing. So I'm gonna start doing that kind of stuff. Um, and also, someone else brought up to me that um, that hey, you, sometimes you you just kind of you blaze through real quick. Oh, it's this part for this, and I'm gonna put this on that, and you really don't explain. You know what? What was that part? Where did you get that from? What's the part number? Where can I get it? So um, I'm actually going to start listing um, down below in the uh, in the description. I'm going to list the parts, where I got them, and a link to get there. Now I think I uh, I got an affiliate uh, agreement with Amazon. So for the stuff I get, I get a lot of stuff through Amazon. Um, for uh, for the stuff, I'm going to list the link. There's going to be a couple of links that if you click on that link and you go to Amazon and you want to buy that part, uh, it's actually going to get me a teeny tiny commission. Um, so that could be your way of helping me uh, finance this build and keep things going. Keeps me on here, uh, keeps you watching, keeps the build going, and it kind of supplements a little bit uh, the cost of uh, tools, parts, labor, all that stuff. So, um, if you feel like doing that, that would be much appreciated. Uh, puts a little bit of coin in the bank to be able to buy that next cool part that I put on that I can tell you, hey, I got this from uh, over here and it works pretty cool and you'll get to see real world when it's done, how does it perform? Because I've been thinking long term, when the car's completely built, then what do I do? All right, do I, do I get something else and build something else? Um, I'm kind of looking long term. So everything that's going on in this car, I don't have any sponsorship, okay? So everything that goes on this vehicle, I'm buying and putting on because I think it's the best part that I can get for it, money-wise in my budget range. So um, once the car's together, uh, I'm going to start doing some updates, some real-world uh, uh, tests. Of, uh, of the parts that are on there. So if something fails, you're gonna know. If something works great, you're gonna know. Uh, and I plan to take it out to some events, do, do uh, some car shows uh, once it's done, some other things like that. So um, I'm thinking of ways to kind of continue this on afterwards. And then depending on how well this goes, maybe I do a couple more upgrades. Uh, you know what, when I put the car together, I could only afford to do this. But now I'm in a position where I'm going to go back and I'm going to put something different on it because now I've got the, the coin to do it. I don't know. So anyway, uh, enough of me talking. So this, uh, this is me getting a, a bunch of crap off my chest. And um, when we come back, the next video will be uh, suspension, front suspension. And then the video after that will be front brakes. Uh, and then I'll try to do them. I don't want to make gigantic videos that take up uh, a, a lot of your time. I want to do them in little chunks that uh, you can sit down, go through real quick. Um, so yeah, we'll do suspension, upper lower control arms, spindles, that kind of stuff. Then uh, part two of that will be uh, the front brakes. And then we'll go to the rear suspension, rear brakes. And then uh, we'll get on to the steering gear and, and all that. And, and we'll just keep uh, plugging forward until it's done. Anyway, uh, this is Hutch. Thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, I hope you're still here listening to the end of this. And uh, when I come back, I promise we're actually going to do some work. And you won't have to listen to me run my mouth uh, doing nothing. So anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for... Uh, Click it on the bell so you actually get a notification. Um, if, you, uh, if you're checking out uh, my, uh, my website, go on Facebook, thank you for that. Um, I've got a t-shirt shop that's also up in the link right next, uh, right next to uh, the, the Facebook and, and the, the website. So um, I got a bunch of G-Body t-shirts, some, some other interesting stuff. Visit the t-shirt shop. That helps out quite a bit as well. It, uh, it helps to finance the build uh, just a little bit. So, um, and it gets you a shirt. So who, 
Who doesn't like that? Everyone wins, right? So if you find something you like, pick up a shirt. That helps me out. Uh, and, um, and post something back to me saying, hey, I got your shirt. Looks cool. I love it. All right? I dig that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, again, uh, I'm done talking. So appreciate you being here. Uh, look forward to seeing you back. Take it easy, guys.